Which is better, a smaller watch at say 36 millimeters in diameter or something closer to 40 or even larger? It can be a tricky question, especially with a brand like Omega that makes the same model watch in multiple sizes. When it comes to selecting your next watch, I get requests for help making that decision all the time. That gets a question I've posed to you guys myself on more than one occasion. It can be especially difficult to choose when you're trying to decide between two very similar watches, or in this case, a couple of watches that are almost identical with the only real difference being the size. What's up YouTube, I'm Guy, and recently I got a really nice email from a viewer asking for help picking his next watch. Since he also sent a really generous donation, I wanted to take a little extra time to address his question in a response video. Jonathan saw my recent this or that video that I posted not too long ago, where I tried to help viewers choose between watches that they're looking at, and the timing was a bit fortuitous as he's facing a which watch to get next quandary of his own right now. now. Hopefully we can get him sorted out and maybe get him pushed in the right direction. So let's get into it after a quick word about today's video sponsor. Wrist Candy Watch Club offers NATO and traditional straps in nylon, purlon, leather, and canvas. They use a soft, comfortable, and durable nylon on their NATO straps, and their Perlon straps feature braided nylon with a size adjustable buckle to fit any wrist. Visit wristcandywatchclub.com to view their collection and leave a comment below with the hashtag WCW to enter this month's free strap giveaway. I'll paraphrase Jonathan's email message for brevity's sake, but the long and short of it is that after losing the bezel of a Tag Heuer course that he had owned for 20 years and giving up on finally finding a replacement after unsuccessfully searching for one over the course of a few months, he got sucked into this hobby. He started out with his first automatic watch, a Seiko SARB033, and he also got an Alpinist as well. Now the rest of his collection is on the smaller side, as he prefers watches that are under 40 millimeters in diameter. These watches include a Nomos Orion, which is a fantastic watch that I've reviewed in the past as a matter of fact, a 1967 Seiko Lord Marfil, and a 36 millimeter Rolex Explorer, which he says he absolutely loves. Now this brings us to the decision that he's trying to make. So like he was drawn to the Explorer, so too is he very much interested in a couple of different Omega Seamaster Aquaterra models. Specifically, it's a few older references, the 2503.80 and the 2504.80, which are for all intents and purposes the same watch, but one comes in at 39 and a half millimeters and the other at 36. One of these is very similar in size to the Saab 33 that he has, and the other is almost the same as the Explorer that he currently owns, but he can't decide on which one to go for. Now, the easy answer to just go try them on doesn't really apply here. Being a bit older and a little bit rare, you can't just walk into any and every watch dealer and try them on. So we'll have to approach this from a different angle. I'm gonna start by asking the question, do you want a sports watch or do you want a dress watch? It's not a universal truth, but smaller watches tend to feel a bit more dressy and larger watches a bit more sporty. Now, certainly your smaller 36 millimeter Explorer is sporty, and the larger 39mm Seiko Saab 033 has a dressy element to it, but being under the radar, the Explorer is really an any occasion watch, not just a sports watch, and on a metal bracelet, the Seiko isn't exactly for black tie events only. Now with that in mind, and also looking at your collection, which includes the Lord Marvel and the Nomos, I think that you more than have the dressier side of your collection covered, and I'm leaning towards going with the larger Omega. I think it adds a bit more diversity than the reduced size model within the context of your collection as it stands today. There's also another reason why I'd really gravitate towards the 39 millimeter model as well. After looking up the specs on both of these watches, it would appear that the smaller model has the much maligned 19 millimeter lug width. Now this introduces all sorts of challenges if you ever decide to put it on a strap. And sure, you could find leather and nylon straps that will fit, but the amount of options opens up significantly once you're shopping for straps in the 20 millimeter size range. Also, I'm personally not a fan of wearing bracelets, or straps for that matter, that are more narrow than 20 millimeters. 19 isn't terrible, but it's really a non-starter for me at 18. So I think a watch just sits better on the wrist with a 20 millimeter strap or bracelet. Another concern I might have is legibility. And 
the dial, the hands, the date, they're gonna all be smaller on the 36 millimeter version of this watch. If you're anything like me, your eyes aren't getting any better as we get older. Now it's probably not a big factor, but it's something that I'd have to think about if I'm gonna go into buying one of these without seeing it first in person. Now the last thing to consider, and it's something that only you can answer, is what will you do with your Seiko SARB 033 when it needs to be serviced? I asked this because it's a fairly inexpensive watch, and the cost to service it might be prohibitive, or at least not really worth it. Now when that day comes, and this watch is no longer running, would it be nice for you to have a similarly sized watch in your collection to assume the role that the SARB once filled? You know, on the other hand, because of the value of something like your Rolex or the Omega, of course you would opt to service it as needed and keep it in good working order for decades to come. So it might make more sense to go with the larger model and fill that gap with a higher end watch since you don't have anything like that there yet. Well, that's my thoughts on Jonathan's dilemma specifically. Hopefully it was helpful and it will lead you in the direction to make the correct decision for yourself and what's right for your collection. Now, what about the debate of larger versus smaller watches in general? This watch is too big, that watch is too small. It's a debate that I see come up all the time and there's really no right or wrong answer if I'm being truthful. Whether a watch is too large or too small is gonna vary from person to person and from one watch to the next on a case-by-case -case basis. Too often, people get hung up on the numbers. If a watch's diameter is this, then it's too big or too small. And while looking at it like that might get you to the correct conclusion more often than not, you're gonna be selling yourself short by not looking into it a little bit more closely. Here's what I've learned over the years. A watch's diameter usually doesn't tell the whole story. In actuality, a watch's wingspan, or the length from the top lug edge to the bottom lug edge, will play a much larger role in how a watch wears than the diameter will. But not just that, the lug width also plays a lesser but still very important factor as well. From there, you really need to look at the watch's proportions and the design because things like the use of space on the dial, the width of the bezel, and the shape of the case are gonna play a huge role in how a watch presents and feels on the wrist. But here's the key that tons of people get wrong. You can't just look at a picture and tell. Close up, high resolution pictures of watches will not give you a sense of the size and scale of a watch and seeing it in person will very often completely change your opinion on a piece. I can't tell you how many times this has happened to me. I had a preconceived notion about a watch based purely on pictures or videos and my opinion changed completely once I saw it in person. I've done 180s on watches that I thought I would love, and the same has happened with watches that I didn't care for in pictures. The moral of the story is that it definitely helps to be open-minded and willing to wait till you have some actual experience with the watch before you jump to conclusions on it when it comes to size, because sometimes you're gonna be surprised. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up this one for today. Thanks to the viewer who sent in this email and for the very generous donation. I do greatly appreciate it. And thanks to all you guys for tuning in and checking this video out. Let us know down in the comments which Omega do you think Jonathan should go for. I'm sure he'd appreciate the feedback. And I guess with that said, there's nothing else to go over, so I'm gonna go ahead, sign off, and say bye now.